Hi, Shane Willis here from AStrongPurpose.com. In this video, I'm going to take you to one of the classes I was teaching, talking about mortgages that we saw before the crash and what to look out for as we're now recovering. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so as we were discussing, I want to talk to you now about the mortgages that we saw right before the bust. Today we're going to talk about verifications, what we saw out there. There's actually five mortgage types that I want to discuss, and I want to kind of count them like five sisters, if you will. Each sister has a different requirement to take her out, and some of them are not so good. <laughs> All right, so the first sister, her name was Siva. Siva, S-I-V-A, Siva. Siva stood for Stated Income Verified Assets. So what Siva required is that when you filled out a mortgage application, you put down what you did, then you stated how much you earned. Stated, she didn't verify it. She did look to make sure it made sense. If you put down you were a cook at McDonald's, and you make 100000 a year, that's not going to work. But she did not verify your income as long as it made sense. What she did do was say, show me the money. In other words, she verified the assets. That's what the VA stands for. Stated income, verified assets. Okay? So you must show her the bank statements. If the loan required six months reserves, you better have six months reserves and you show it in the bank statements as liquid assets. So that's SIVA. That was one of the first loans that we've seen come out during the early 2000s, late 90s. SIVA's sister, who was a little dangerous, was called SISA. Now SISA had a little bit less criteria in order to go out. What she did well, she said, I want you to state the income just like her other sister, but then you can also state your assets. Now again, they're going to look to see if it makes sense. They want to see that you've been an accountant for 15 years and you've got $400,000 in the bank as a stated asset. That makes sense. Again, if you've been a cook at a fast food restaurant and you say you got $1.2 million, well, now she thinks you're lying a little too much. So she didn't really verify things, but she wanted to make sure they made sense. So on the application, you actually did put your income, but you stated it, and you did put your assets, but you stated it. None of this was verified. Okay, so that's CISA. Now we get into some of the dangerous sisters. The next sister, Neva. This one's standards are really starting to get low. What Neva stated, that in order to get a loan with this type of verification, we don't only want you filling out the income section. I don't want you filling it out. Just don't even put down what you do. All I want to do, like her other sister up here, is show me the money. <laughs> so as long as you show that you got enough assets in order to cover the reserve requirements needed, then you might be able to go out with Neva or get a loan via Neva. Now, understand every one of these loans cost more. So as we go down this list, the interest rate's getting higher and higher. Okay? But she did not even want you to spell out what you did. Just leave the employment and income section blank. As long as you have a high enough credit score, and you can show me the money with the verified assets, you're good. You got a loan. It gets worse. Her next sister, Nissa. Can you guess what Nissa is? No income, leave the income section blank, and state your assets. 
You better have a high credit score to get this one. But you basically can leave the income section blank and you can just tell me how much you have in the bank. And we believe you, no problem. That's Wall Street greed for you right there. This is where we really started to get into trouble. Okay? So that was the fourth sister, the fourth type of loan that you could get. Now the fifth one was the absolute worst. The fifth one was called NODA. NODA. What is NODA? NODA was no doc. No documentation required. This sister basically said if you had a high enough credit score, we can go out. Or the bank said as you have a high enough credit score, no problems. We'll lend you the money on the real estate because you obviously pay your bills, right? Because your credit score is high. So you obviously pay your bills. So we don't need you to put anything in the income section. We don't need you to put anything in the asset section. We basically want you to put your name, your social security number, your address so that I can pull credit. And then if you have a high enough credit score and willing to pay usually one and a half to 2% higher than the other rates, you don't have to prove a thing. This is where we got into a whole lot of trouble because you had the high credit score teenagers, 19, 20, 21 years old, going out and getting five investment properties using a no-doc loan. That spells trouble. So the reason I showed you that was because I wanted to show you a lack of documentation that was being allowed in the heyday because real estate always goes up. Right. We're starting to see some subprime come back into the marketplace. And I think we're gonna to continue to see some subprime come back in the marketplace because a lot of America has been faced with a foreclosure or a short sale. So they don't have the credit scores and your prime lenders are still very, very tight on their guidelines. So we're gonna see some of the subprime come back. It's the documentation that concerns me. Make sure as you're looking or working with lenders or a mortgage broker, which is a vital part of your team. I don't wanna bash mortgage brokers. They're a vital part of the team but make sure we're getting in the right loans and we're calculating our risk accordingly. I hope you learned something on this one. We'll see you on the next video.